Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Let's Make Some Noise, Women in Music. My name is Rob West. I'm from Creative and Cultural Skills. Uh, Creative and Cultural Skills are a sector skills body and independent charity who are committed to creating fair and inclusive opportunities for people within the creative and cultural sectors. And you can find out more about our work by going to ccskills.org.uk. Connect is our platform for bringing together employers and educators to address skills issues. And we've been working with BBC Music introducing for a number of years now, bringing them together with FE colleges. So we're pleased to be offering this session in partnership with BBC Music. And um, let's go straight really into the session. Just to tell you that we do have a Q&A uh, box at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions for the panelists, then please put them in there. So let me hand over to Joanna Slater, who is Curriculum Manager of Creative Arts at Wolverhampton College and a Music Technology Lecturer as well. So Joanna, you can get us going. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and, and thank you, Rob, for the introduction. Um, happy International Women's Day, I think, is where we'll start. Um, really pleased to have been asked to chair this session this afternoon. Um, and as Rob mentioned, I am Curriculum Manager at the City of Wolverhampton College, and um, I'm also a live sound um, music technology lecturer. And we join you today from the um, Civic Halls venue, the Slade Rooms in Wolverhampton. Um, I've been working in the industry for uh, around 20 years and teaching for a similar amount of time um, and it is one of the most exciting industries to work in. Uh, it's fast paced, it's energetic, it's exciting, there's quite a lot of pressure. Um, so if you like getting your hands dirty um, and you like being involved in such an energetic situation then the music industry is most definitely right for you. There's, there's quite a lot of preconceptions and concerns from time to time about the industry and hopefully today speaking to uh, the panel and some of the members that we've got here today that will perhaps hopefully alleviate some of those for you um, and help you consider a, a, a career in the industry and, and certainly women a career in the industry. Um, so without further ado, I shall start to hand over to the panel so that they are able to introduce themselves too. Um, so if we start with Kitty. Hello, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Kitty and I am a singer-songwriter. I'm also a radio presenter and I present the BBC Introducing in Norfolk programme. So for anyone that doesn't know anything about introducing, um, we have a show on every single local station across the UK um, and we listen to all your music every week. Anyone can send in their music to us. We listen to every single track and then we play all the ones we like on the show. So that's basically what I get to do week to week is listen to a load of amazing new music and then talk about it on the radio we also put on a lot of gigs and events. We have stages at festivals. We forward on tracks to all the national shows on Radio 1, um, BBC 2, Radio 3, literally across the board. Um, and I've been doing that now for about two and a half years. Um, I started out as an artist. That's how I came into introducing. I sent in my tracks and went on the show a few times for interviews and things and fell in love with it completely. So when the producer was like, oh, if you wanna be involved, you can just come back whenever and watch the show. I really took that on board and I went back every single week for a year and watched the show going out and did whatever I could um, until eventually, as always happens in radio, someone wasn't available and I got to present the show um, and it all kind of went from there. So that's who I am, that's what I do. And yeah, it's really nice to be here today on International Women's Day. That's fantastic, thank you ever so much. Um, as Rob mentioned on his, his intro, um, a number of, of colleges have been connected with the um, introducing programme now in, in regards to making you know, live music videos, which again is a really great way of kind of increasing that exposure and, and getting young people on board that may alternatively be unaware. So a really fantastic initiative and it sounds like you've had a, a fantastic introduction into it as well. So thank you ever so much. Um, Fuzz. 
Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fuzz Chowdhury. I am a radio producer currently working on Radio One's feature artist shows and indie shows with Jack Saunders. Um, and it's been my dream to produce that late night Radio One show since I was 14 and discovered new music on the radio. So I literally am living my childhood dream. Um, I get to curate all of the music that's played out on the show. I have meetings with record labels, managers, pluggers, talking about new music, what's coming through, new signings, um, booking guests and musicians for sessions, interviews, all of the features. And we are kind of the first port of call for artists once they've got that solid BBC introducing support and the grassroots is there where kind of the next step up for artists into the Radio 1 um, story start of their journey. Uh, before I was a radio producer I worked in the music industry at record labels as a radio plugger in music PR, A&R, various bits and bobs so a very unique perspective of both sides of radio. Um, having plugged it and produced it. So hopefully I'll be able to share a lot of insights and answer a lot of questions for you today. That's fantastic, thank you. And so so brilliant to hear that you, you've achieved something that you really wanted to as well in, in quite a short time scale, really. So congratulations, that, that's absolutely superb. Um, and finally, Katie, please. Hi everyone, lovely to meet you and happy International Women's Day, what an amazing day and wonderful panel and chair. Um, as I said, I'm Katie, I'm one of the project coordinators um, for BBC Live Music and Events. So we work for BBC Run, One Extra, Radio 2, Six Music and very importantly BBC Music Introducing as well. So what my job is to do is when any network has an idea for a live music event, my team will help make that happen and bring it to life. So whether that's in a field for a festival or abroad in a radio studio or could be absolutely anywhere, we help make that happen. So it's a super busy job, but it's a really, really fun one as well. And actually a job I think when I was at school and a student didn't really know existed. So I'm really glad to champion it and hope to get lots more wonderful women into it. And actually in our team, it's actually a predominantly woman team which is kind of unheard of sometimes so very proud to be part of that but yeah so as I said our team at works could be anything we could be with introducing in Glastonbury we could be at Latchford Festival we could be putting on Radio One's big weekend so it's always really busy um, but really exciting to be championing not only some of the biggest artists in the world but helping give a platform to new and emerging artists which BBC Music Introducing is all about. That's fantastic thank you and again lovely to, to kind of hear uh, your journey in, in that regard um obviously it's national careers week as well um which thinks this links in really really neatly with and obviously we, we kind of need to have a little look at the focus of some of our career journeys as well um we've we've alluded to that in the opening statements but i think it would be really great for for our participants to hear about how how we got here um and and kind of the steps that we took and also perhaps considering were there any educational goals with it as well. I know in, in some cases we happen upon these steps, but I think it's, it's probably quite interesting to investigate some of those routes in, into it as well. Um, so what I would just kind of like to do is, is ask you all um, to have a think about your career journey so far and, and actually perhaps tell the participants how you got here specifically, if there was any highlights or significant moments maybe that you think were particularly poignant. Um, and and I just know from the, my perspective, I actually started out as a classical musician um, and that was actually where I began my journey um, and uh, went to Birmingham Conservatoire and, and studied classical to, to obviously quite an intense level. Uh, I had a little bit of a eureka moment with the prodigy of all bands where I, I decided that I wanted to make that noise. Um, and I wanted to be the, the one responsible for, for making the floor jump and, and kind of chat, had a complete change in direction at this, that stage, which might seem a little unusual. Um, I wondered if any of you have um, had similar stories or, or how you got to where you are now. And, and actually, if we can start with Katie again. Oh, that's so interesting. I'd love to hear that, Joanna. And I think all of us probably have quite a few stories like that. Um, 
you can probably tell by my accent I'm from Northern Ireland and from a really small town there so I never really as I said previously thought about this job or even being able to work at something like BBC Radio and my kind of route into it so I went to university didn't study anything related to it but I um, had a music blog which I did as kind of a hobby um, and I had it in Tumblr and then just as because I thought back in Northern Ireland there wasn't any jobs really doing that so I thought well I'll just create it myself um, and I did a few DJs I liked and things like that so something that was a hobby actually really helped grow those skills and make connections in the industry um, and then I actually got a place in the internship scheme um, at BBC Radio 1 eight years ago now so you can kind of work out my age there but um, and actually when I applied for that one of the things that got me to the interview stage was providing um, a copy of one of the interviews I'd done in my blog so something that maybe nobody was paying attention to actually was such a useful tool that I was doing in the background to help me get that internship. Um, and what I would say, touching your point about the educational side of things, it doesn't matter, I think, what you're studying at school or if you go into university or if you go into any other type of secondary education, whether you like drama or you're good at sport or you're the one that's good organising in your group, there's all those different skills that will take you far in anything you want to do and I think all of us will probably say how important good communication is and especially in the music industry so that's something when you're at school with your friends and the hobbies and the music you care about and you talk about and you share that will be really useful to you in the future. That's superb thank you and I think again a really interesting point that you've touched on there as well is about not necessarily having that what would be traditional creative background because I, I think um, what's really important for, for our participants to note today is that every kind of creative business has somebody like us in there which relies on communication resilience um, being able to kind of um, work with others, independent working and all of, of those kind of skills as well. And also for some of our participants to realise that our roots weren't so um, into the industry, were not so reliant on social media at the time. And obviously that's quite a significant change. Um, and thinking back, I, I remember when um, BBC introducing on Radio Shropshire was called the Friday Night Gerbil, um, <laughs> right back in its original kind of... Um, kind of days when demos had to be sent before there was an uploading system you know and I think that's quite an interesting point as well so I'll hand over to Kitty. Um, yeah I think that's really interesting I think what you said Katie is, is really interesting about like I don't know the randomness of the fact that you'd been making this blog and then that was the useful thing because when I went I did history and politics at uni I just finished in June um, and I wanted to do something in politics or maybe be a historian and um it was only because i've been playing music since i was eight and that was always just a hobby that i didn't see it having any relevance really in my life more than that um and you know i wanted to do academia but then because i did music and i've always worked really hard at music just because i love it i've been playing gigs since i was like 11 and all of that meant that I could upload to introducing and then getting played and introducing and getting invited into the studio was like a totally random chance for me to see another side and I like see something else that I might be interested in. Um, so when I went in, I was instantly like, oh my God, this thing is amazing. Like I love chatting, I love music. I just never knew that this was a job that was like open to people and open to young people with no media qualifications. Like I don't have any radio training, none of it, didn't know anything, but they were very happy to let me like come in and do work experience and just see what goes on. And I would say like, it's a bit of a weird time at the moment. Most radio stations still aren't exactly open doors, but when we are again, a lot of local introducing shows have volunteers, a lot of local introducing shows are very happy to run you through what they do or let you come in and watch shows like it's a very special part of, of the BBC in terms of that and that open door thing mm -hmm. um so yeah it's just it's those random routes in isn't it and and how they happen but I would say like do as much as you can and try out as much as you can and if someone says like oh well, you're welcome to come along and have a look go because like 
I didn't think you could just rock up to the BBC and we have like glass doors in the forum and it was literally like going up to the glass doors and waving until someone came and let me in and then I was like someone said I could come watch is that cool still so you know do it it's very rare that people will be horrible or you know you might get turned away but then go somewhere else and, and try it again so yeah brilliant thank you and, and for us how about yourself um very very different but <laughs> the key key ideas are their persistence the kit you just mentioned definitely very you need to be determined you need to be persistent um, even if you don't know what the exact job is that you want to be doing that you want to work in music is enough of a starting point. Um, my big break, not my big break, I started working in radio when I was 14, year nine, I saw an advert in the Birmingham Mail for a local community radio station, Scratch Radio, who had a little advert asking for volunteers and went to my friend Sally at school, kind of cut it out of the paper and said, let's go do a music show because we would make mixtapes for each other all the time and make, we'd just got the new iPod and we were just absolutely buzzing. Um, so we went along to Scratch Radio, signed up for a show, got the, everyone there was amazing. It was all other students who were running because Scratch is a student radio station. So that was a very, very eye-opening experience for me just kind of been that young but learning how to run a desk and how to mix cds and how to put a show together in the running order and booking interviews with i think one of my first interviews ever was with kasabian before they'd even been signed which was just like amazing uh, block party arctic monkeys like all these amazing bands like when they were very very little and it was just that experience that really just as Katie and Katie said, was my hobby because I was very much on the road to be a doctor. I went to Birmingham University. I studied medicine, signed up to study medicine. The first thing I did in Freshers' Fair was go to Burn FM, Birmingham University's radio station, sign up and say, I want to be the head of music. And three years as head of music at Burn FM. And it's the best thing I've ever, ever done. And it was that experience that when I left uni, economic crisis, massive financial crash, no jobs anywhere, what are we going to do? Um, so I actually made two CVs, a science CV, a medicine one, and a radio CV, a music one, and just applied for every job that I could find in either industry. And just so happened that the first job that I got was at Amazing Radio in Newcastle. So that's that was the start of my journey, um, presenting the indie show there, and then moved down to London, had to start all over again, um, and got a job as receptionist at a record label, PS. So that's another really cool thing that I would say to student college students, especially like, don't be afraid to like, just start at the bottom and work your way up because the things that you learn along the way, the people that you meet along the way, like there's colleagues and friends that I made when they were interns at PS and I was receptionist who are now head of international uh, beggars record label they are presenting on XF Radio X like this it's the come up is amazing and you really support each other and coming up through that the community is amazing um, and then worked in record labels for eight years and then got a phone call saying Radio One want to do an indie music show and we've been asking who really knows their indie music and your name keeps coming up so please can you have a coffee and my jaw dropped hit the floor and I was like yes yes I will come and have a coffee with you and we launched the show and here I am. <laughs> That's fantastic. And it's so interesting to hear from you all as well about, you know, the unconventional routes and perhaps the different routes that you followed and, and obviously the, the different journeys that you took. We've had um, a comment actually in the chat, which I thought was quite interesting um, uh, regarding what we've said. Um, this young lady says, working backstage at festivals, looking after artists, I saw the conditions that they and the crew were dealing with under intense pressure. I also learned about the mad schedules and uncertain income they had to cope with. This made me want to work with the music industry professionals to promote their resilience. At school, career options I were told about were finance, secretarial and hairdressing. 
Um, I think that's a really interesting comment and, and wondered if, if any of you had got any thoughts on that or any similar experiences. I know that perhaps you got different outcomes initially, um, but do you have any experience of kind of that career advice and guidance that you were given? <laughs> First? I do. I remember <laughs> going into my careers day when I was choosing, um, going into the See the Careers Advisor at school and telling her that I wanted to work at Radio 1 and she genuinely laughed at me. So... <laughs> career don't don't listen to anybody <laughs> it's my uh my advice just know what you want and go after it um and if they the people who are meant to be giving you advice and careers advice if they don't have the answers you're looking for someone will um there are skills like cc skills for example the work that you're doing loads of further education things multi-track aim she said so there are so many incredible organizations out there you li just google search women in music and the amount of schemes and information that comes up and then just reach out send a message on linkedin send an instagram dm just you don't have to be a hairdresser if you want to work in music right Thank you for that. I, I do remember myself, and unfortunately, this was my mum at the time who who did persistently say to me when I swapped over to 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 these kind of sound engineering side of things, "What are you really going to do that? What are you going to do with that?" And often the the kind of questions came up about you know what I was going to do in the future, and and we we had some battles, and I do wonder if if some of our young people attending you know today have similar similar issues maybe with careers advisors as well and um, I remember that the turning point for myself and, and my mum were very early on in my career but when I said I'm engineering um, the Australian Pink Floyd mum do you want to come now um, this was a turning point for us because those of you that aren't familiar with the Australian Pink Floyd they are the number one um, tribute band to Pink Floyd and they play at their birthday celebrations and they work with their technical crew on the projections and things so they literally are bona fide for them and I never got to be able to take my mum to see the real Pink Floyd and it was the next best thing and actually that was a turning point in our relationship over my career because it actually she actually felt at that point that this was something that she understood and from that point on we had a better understanding of what I wanted to try and achieve um, and I think that was really important for me and and I think certainly in this industry it can take a little bit of convincing in terms of what our prospects are um Katie and uh, Kitty you both had slightly different routes in it as well did, did did you come across or obviously you didn't initially intend perhaps to do music but what was the kind of advice that you were given at, at generally at uni or generally at school in regards to your career options I go first Katie um I'll, you go so uh yeah I guess like I don't know why, because now I now I am doing music as well, and I love it, and I I really like want to pursue that as well. So it's always a bit of a mystery as to why I like didn't ever consider it. I guess it just was never pitched as a job. Like it's only working and introducing and seeing lots of people doing it as jobs that's made me like get back into it in that way. Because now I meet so many musicians that live off their music. I've like realised there are ways of of doing that as well. Um, and, and there are so many jobs in music. But yeah, I don't remember any careers events ever meeting anyone that like worked in radio or worked in music. And I guess like, I don't know, I was quite lucky and, and I like enjoyed school and I, I got academic work and things. So that's just where we were pushed always. And it mattered a lot for like my sixth form statistics that we all went to university and did like academic things. So it was only really when I got to uni that I was like, oh, they weren't really pushing us personally. They were maybe just pushing us for, for statistics um, to go to like certain universities. I mean, even like the fact that I didn't go to a Russell Group uni was like a disapproving thing. It was like, why are you going to UEA? Um, which is mental. So yeah, I definitely, definitely feel that like lack of being pushed towards creative careers. And now I know so many people in creative careers. It's it's bizarre. Other people's expectations. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Yeah, what I would say to that as well, and I, I love 
April's point there and it touched on what Faz was saying earlier about resilience and how when you kind of see how some parts of the industry works and where things can be improved right down to how um, upcoming artists are treated, um, conditions backstage, um, equality in gender lineups being booked. Um, there's loads and loads of stuff. And if you're coming into that and witnessing that backstage and think, wow, these people really are so resilient, that would then maybe want to make you want to work for a company or create a brand or something yourself that then provides that better place to work environment. I know certainly our team just, we make sure for every live event and after we have briefings and debriefs, you know, what can you do better? What didn't work? Um, Because I think that's so important. And to touch on, yeah, the careers options, I mean, my school was very much your only choices were, right, teacher, nurse, um, doctor, lawyer. I was told I should do law, which I couldn't actually think of anything worse for myself. But that was just kind of like you do those jobs and if you don't, well, you failed. And that's absolutely not the case. And what I would say to the participants today as well, you know, don't panic if you think, gosh, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. I don't think I want to go to university, you know, that's absolutely fine. You need to just not put pressure on yourself and to actually take a step back and think, well, what do you enjoy? Like we said about hobbies and your social life, what do you enjoy listening to, um, sports, things like that. There's so many jobs out there that you maybe just don't know about. Or if there's, again, touch what Fuzz says, you can message people on Twitter, you can DM people you know, in a careers capacity. LinkedIn's amazing. Never underestimate the power of just having a good attitude and building contacts, because you can do a lot of that. That's all for free, really. Um, That doesn't require you to have a degree behind you or, you know, an in a foot up into the industry. So just, again, echoing April's great comment, resilience is just, it's such a key factor to work in the industry. Fantastic, thank you ever so much. Um, let's not forget why we're here today as well, and it's to celebrate women in the music industry. And we've got a fantastic panel here, so thank you for joining us again. On that subject though, um, it's not on us uh, women to fix the gender imbalance, um, but it would be interesting to hear your thoughts and ideas on what the sector, but also um, training providers should be doing to encourage more women into the industry. Um, how, how do you think potentially we can address the imbalance in gender and representation in, in that regard? Um, if I hand over to Kitty first, perhaps. Yeah, sure. Um, it's such a such a massive problem. And I like within introducing it's crazy because the amount of, well, just on my show in Norfolk, I was putting together an, I'll be completely open about this because it's like such a huge issue. I was putting together an International Women's Day playlist for the show on Saturday. And um, so I was like, I was just want all female and non-binary artists. And I went through every single upload that we'd got and under 70 of the uploads that we get and bear in mind we get around 70 a week were from female artists in a year which is crazy right like those stats just seem like they're made up but they're not and we on introducing try and do 50 50 every week it's a really big goal of introducing and you know a lot of that now we've realized means you actually have to go out and we have to go and find these female artists and like beg them to upload because it's not happening and there are obviously reasons for that it's not that women aren't making music that's not the case you know I know that's not the case so why are they not uploading so one of the big things I guess I think is like confidence and there's obviously a lack of confidence happening somewhere along the way and I think when I think back to it like in school and things I knew a lot of boys in bands in school and and not very many women and there were a lot of gigs where we'd go see all our mates play in bands and I played and I never performed at them I just went to, to see all of the guys in the year play so I'd love it if in in school and music lessons and things like women were like encouraged to collaborate and be in bands and things and perform at the school showcases like really push to do that because that's at least a starting point. I think female only um, 
spaces like gigs shows where they only play female artists are really important i think 50 50 within radio within gig lineups the festival lineups have come out again this year and again they're disappointing so like we need to push it and we need to be mad about it because if if like we have to have every festival had to have 50 50 if every small gig had to have 50 50 then it will filter down i'm sure and we'll have to be pushing more women to get into music and to get into these industries um and and then you know a lot of women will find their ways into other creative industries as well and other parts of the music industry but i just think that like initial representation from a young age just still isn't there and that initial encouragement um even in as far as the instruments that women pick up it seems to be different still so yeah i mean i'm not offering that many solutions there i'm just offering problems but this is what i'm seeing at the moment and and yeah i feel it's important to know no, not at all. I think that's really important. And I, I think those statistics were, you know, uh, whilst I was aware of those, I think it's possibly quite alarming to hear, you know, in, in terms of actually who, who uploads, but what we know is out there. But also I think it's really encouraging to hear what your station is doing in regards to trying to change that, that kind of shift in that regard. Just before I um, move to the other panel members, I just wondered if you feel... Um, and it, it's just a thought process that maybe social media potentially has an impact on women's confidence in terms of their participation. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I find um, social media really difficult. I hate it. Like, I really hate doing it. I find it really hard. Um, and I think it probably links in with with all of that issue of confidence and and putting yourself out there. And I think like putting your music online is is really is a really extra scary thing now i don't know if it's just women but in school i put my music up i got berated by the boys in my class for having like my little folk songs on soundcloud and i took them down again and if i hadn't done that you know someone might have found them years and years ago and then they might have got put on a lineup or I might have uploaded them to introducing, I might have known about that, but I didn't because like I was really embarrassed about them. Um, and I think like, yeah, women just need to be really encouraged for, for putting their music up and supported and doing it and, and told because like, I don't think that will change. And I guess that's a big thing with social media, right? Like, I think it's incredible when I see like young female artists that are putting themselves out there on social media and posting their music all the time and sharing everything they're doing because like why not and you should start as soon as you start and you can follow that journey and you can take down things if you do something better that's fine but like there's just no harm in it um yeah and I wish I'd known that but we learn <laughs> Thank you. And thank you for your honesty. You know, I think it's really important for us um, to hear. Um, Fuz, how about yourself in a slightly more technical role? How have, how have you found the, I mean, you mentioned obviously about, about the show, but how have you found the, the gender imbalance? Um, what are your thoughts? The amount of times that I've been the only woman or brown person in a planning meeting <laughs> is, I don't know, I'd be a millionaire, but at the same time it's my i am really lucky to be in a position where i do have the power to change that putting together the music policy for future artists in the indie shows every single one of our shows is over 50 percent women and non-binary artists there is black and brown representation there is queer representation and that's something that i personally am so passionate about and jack and brad are both behind um brad's the other producer on the show we are so behind that vision and I think it's just shouting about those avenues louder the ones that are making a difference the ones that are putting in the effort BBC um, Radio One's big weekend has been a 50-50 lineup since 2018 let's shout about that more Primavera first big festival to achieve 50-50 gender balance buy tickets to those festivals <laughs> don't go to Reading and Leeds if they've still only got four women on the lineup like it's just that's just where you spend your money it counts as well at the end of the day I think another um as a woman in my 30s 
for absolutely blew my mind I read the other day was that women in music at record labels actually out earn men until they hit their thirties. Um, and then men just soar on ahead and it's like, oh, I wonder what possibly happens to women in their thirties that mean they don't <laughs> have to earn any more money, which is utterly bizarre and nonsense because I think becoming a parent is the, <laughs> like, I think if you can do that as a job, then if you and do be a good parent, then you can do any job on the face of the planet and do it really well. So I think let's encourage more mothers to come back to music and actually make it a nice place for them to be. Give them flexible hours, give them the leeway, let them prioritize their families first. Like it's just records at the end of the day. <laughs> um, and I kind of feel like a thing that I've noticed and a lot of my female and non-binary counterparts have started to do, which is change the game big time, is we very openly discuss our salaries. So what are you on? What are you earning? Oh, this happened when I was at Universal. Um, the annual bonuses and the other five women, oh, you've got 3% bonus, isn't this great? You've got 3% bonus, isn't this great? Oh, finding out that the blokes are on 10% bonus. But, um why why do they get the 10% bonus and we're only on the 3% so rallying together going mm. to senior management being like we actually work harder we get just as good results when as dedicated as committed we deserve that 10% bonus and fighting for things like that together but I just think women coming together non-binary people coming together shouting for and fighting for what they want is the way forward and as more and more of us are getting into these powers and places of responsibility it's making sure that the kids come in through and gen z and they have the opportunities there and are encouraged and just big up. i think what kitty was talking about being a confidence thing i think that's very much mm -hmm. possible to just be a generational thing where like our generation is the last where we would like shamed on social media and that's the end of it when actually it's we can all back each other big time so thank you I think like again it's really interesting certainly from a technical perspective for myself I know that um, as, a, as an engineer and rigger I'm one of very very few often and it's the generalizations I feel in an aging workforce in that particular part of the sector that kind of um helps keep the stereotypes alive actually and uh, I think obviously we need a, a little bit of a bit of a change there um if I can Katie just come lastly to you on, on that uh, on the gender representation and I was literally just about to say exactly what you just said Joanna I mean I think if you look at the live music and events industry there's just what needs to change is the association and stereotype of uh, a sound engineer as a man or um uh, the tech at your gig is led up by a man or the tour manager is an older white man it's those roles I think then is preventing women and non-binary thinking oh I can actually go for um, a role like that or I could be accepted to apply for that or that's something I can do because it's just this consistent stereotype that those are men's jobs and they're absolutely not and we actually had a really good um, question in the Q&A box um, if I click answer live, will that work? Um, so the question was, do you feel like more women are pursuing a career as a sound engineer compared to 10 years ago or so? Which is a brilliant question. And what I'll say is in the five years I've been doing this role, in particular, I was in production beforehand. I've seen in the past few years, certainly more, inter uh, more interest and more apprenticeships for females um, wanting to be part of our radio broadcasting team and in particular the live music sound engineer side of it and this is people in their late teens early 20s and I think that is so important and so great to see and I think from having seen that having a bit of a shift um, I think we just have to be better at shouting um, about it and even things like this like the panel we're doing today is giving a platform to those people doing the jobs that you think are oh that's 
old men's job um, so that more people can have that under understand that that's not the case at all and the more wonderful women and non-binary coming through to have those jobs you know think of where we are in about if we were to have this panel in 10 15 years time you know yeah, that's really uh, excellent. Thank you. And I certainly know um, from our perspective, um, organisationally, um, and, and when I'm looking at recruitment in my in my curriculum areas, um, certainly in, in music technology and sound engineering, which is my discipline, I've made an active effort to ensure that my female students feature heavily in the promotion of those courses. Um, but also to ensure that on open days and open events, I'm there to talk to them as well, you know, and we've actually seen quite positively uh, an, an increase in the number of female applications into the technical courses, which is really fantastic. We've still got some way to go, but I think echoing what you've all said is that we need to shout about it. We need to stick together and we actually need to challenge, I think, these stereotypes. And, and actually, even like you said, it was challenged salaries you know just because we are female and in our 30s it doesn't mean we have to have children you know it doesn't mean that's our life ambition and I think it's probably quite important for you know pe people to understand that and, and realize that thank you so much for your answers um we are going to move to some questions from the audience in a minute but before we do if I could just very quickly um, go to your uh, top tips and advice particularly um students and obviously female students that are looking for a career in the music industry what would your your top tip be um and we'll start katie with you this time so what i'd say just kind of echoing what we've all already said is to just never think a job is for you or that you'd be able to have it you can do absolutely anything in this world and it doesn't matter if you don't if you think you know you don't have the qualifications to do or the experience if you have the right attitude and work ethic and going back to the resilience comment and being proactive you absolutely can and if any women are feeling frustrated that you know it still feels like a man's industry we'll use that drive and then be part of the force to change for it and think well when I get x my dream job I want to be part of making that workplace that team that environment more inclusive um more representative of, of what it actually is so I think my advice would be to come into the music industry you know it isn't easy but if you really want to do it you absolutely can so just always kind of keep the faith in that one and keep the dream alive that you can do it. and you know these panels are so useful um just you know if there's a session you like listening to if there's a label that you're always buying or downloading records from look them up go on linkedin google people who could you chat to you know never underestimate it that there are nice people out there that have, have once had to come and get a foot up into or get a door open for them in the industry they've had to do it themselves so just you know people there are good people that would want to help you and I think yeah I'm very excited for hopefully a really wonderful um well not hopefully there is a very wonderful next generation on this call so there you go mm -hmm. excellent thank you um first um Personally, from my perspective, um, student radio, college radio, <laughs> just get, it changed my life. It's every single person that I work with, all my colleagues at Radio One, the amount of us that have come up through student radio, Jack Saunders, my presenter, station manager at Fly FM, like I can guarantee 98% of us all have student radio story, college radio story. Um, so if that's your passion, I very, very highly recommend it. If you love writing, start a music zine, like Enemies Gone, start your own. <laughs> start your own blog, like Katie said she did. Start your own Insta zine. Just join music societies. Dive into your local scene. What are your local venues? Uh, can you volunteer there? Can you go to the sound tech, the sound engineer, see if they can mentor you? Just ask and keep asking and keep being really persistent um and i think it's again a confidence thing but don't be afraid to ask for advice just if, if you don't know then somebody will so ask and like kate you're saying there are far more nicer people <laughs> in this industry than there are yeah music industry snobs 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, and lastly, to Kitty. As I said at the start, I guess, like the be persistent um, and be open, like try different things for sure and, and be open to what it is that you might want to do. But also like my main tip I'd say is just like, you can be bold and most of the time, like people are quite happy to hear it. Like if you really want to be a radio presenter or you really want to be like the, head sound engineer at a venue like you can go in and say that that's the thing you want to do it doesn't mean that they're going to be like cool come in and be a radio presenter it just means that when those opportunities do come up they know that that's what you want to do the people around you know that that's where you're planning to go and like I you know everyone says it but like if you don't ask you don't get and um we get I get emails all the time like really bold emails from people just being like hey, I want to be a radio presenter. Like, when can I come in? What can I do? And they're never women. <laughs> like, they are never from women. And they work. They're the emails that work. They are the emails that get people in. They're the kind of people that do really well and, and get really far by being bold, you know? And you have every right to, to be like that. And I'm not saying that means you'll get what you want immediately, but like, you have every right to say where you want to be. So do it and go for it. That's brilliant. And, and of course, I can see you've got your hand up there. I also just wanted to make a comment as um, I come from a very, very working class background. And my number one thing that made me uncomfortable coming into working at record labels was the amount of very, very middle class, very white, very posh people who were there because back in the day, internships were unpaid. So if you couldn't afford to look after yourself and pay your rent and pay your bills for three months, then you were not getting that internship. I had to turn down internships at XFM, at Absolute Radio, at Polydor Records because they were unpaid and I had no money to support myself. Um, and I think if you're in a similar situation, we're really lucky now that a lot of the year long internships are paid, beggars, Universal, Warners, all of the major labels do have paid internships now, apply for them. And another thing is the amount of music companies like PRS, Women in Music, Multitrack, who advertise and specifically work for women, people of color, people with disabilities to get them into jobs in music like just all of these platforms are incredible and can support you financially or can give you that leg up that you need so if money in like everyone thinks that you have to be in London for the music industry to make it not so true now especially not in a post-covid world um but there are so many really incredible places that you can reach out to and kind of research and learn up on and I really wish that like I know if multi-track had been a thing when I was 18 I would not have gone to university and studied medicine like in a million years so I kind of like that's just another thing that I wanted to say it's like those resources that's are out there that's really helpful thank you because it actually answers one of the questions in the chat actually so we'll uh, we will just move over to the chat for a moment um we had um, a participant ask do you advise moving down to london in search of opportunities or stick to your own city and obviously you've just touched on that but i think i would further to that in that no i don't think in the, the modern day and age you do need to move down to london um, if you want to work in the uh, music industry and in search of those opportunities. But I think what I would say is that you do need to be prepared to be flexible. Um, the music industry doesn't stand still, uh, whether that's um, in radio terms, as we've heard from, from colleagues on the panel, or whether it's in terms of live sound and events, the, the events aren't always in one location. And I think it's about being prepared to be flexible in that regard, in that you may well have a base, but I certainly know throughout my career, work has taken me everywhere. Um, and I think it's finding that balance. Um, I hope that answers the question, but did anybody else want to, to add anything to that one? Just to add really super quickly, I agree with both yourself and Fuzz and that, and this is, you know, me moving over from Northern Ireland, but I think now in 2022, especially if you look at the BBC, you know, we're such 
massive productions coming from Salford, coming from up in Glasgow, from Mailbox and Birmingham. And um, I know our um, popular youth networks, the likes of Radio 1 and 1 Extra, are trying to move more shows to not just be so London centric. So I think more now than ever, you shouldn't feel the pressure like, gosh, I need to move to London. I need to have that hustle. I need to, you know, there's so many amazing opportunities that could be more closer to home um, that you could factor in with flexible working. So, yeah, don't feel you have to move to London and look a bit closer to home. Thank you. That's great. We've also had another question um, in the chat, which is uh, mentioning that colleges and universities encourage students to build a network of industry connections, particularly on LinkedIn. Um, this particular individual mentions that they've reached out to you, Katie, but notice um, that both Kitty and myself actually aren't on LinkedIn. Um, they ask um, or, or mention that uh, first said you're women in your 30s and this, this particular participant turns 50 this year and is looking to start a new career, um, but find reaching out to people in the music business and music strategy, they nearly always seem to be men. Is there a possibility or scope for us to set up something on LinkedIn for women in music? Any thoughts, anyone? Um, can I take this, Joanna? Of course you can. Um, I was on LinkedIn as a bright-eyed 21-year-old entering the music industry, and the amount that I found it disheartening, and it just knocked me down so many times from just... I did not get good advice. I was told not to bother, that I wasn't the right fit, the whatever that means. I just, I genuinely found LinkedIn so toxic that I deleted my profile like nine years ago and I've never gone back on it. And I completely agree that there should be a, a forum of sorts where we can all get together and support each other. One of the things that we have on Future Arts and Indie Shows, we have a Discord group where the, the, some of these kids, they blow my mind with how creative and excited they are and the ideas they have and how passionate they are. And I regularly give them advice. They come to me and ask questions and I'm more than happy to do that for anyone who's asking and I know loads of my colleagues in radio and music are the same it's just one of those things that's really difficult to be centralized so it's kind of where one of those organizations like she said so or um, something along those lines need to kind of take charge and make it their own so maybe it's something CC skills could uh, kind of start up and we can all get things going from there Thank you ever so much. Um, we've got one more question in the chat, which I think we've got time for. Um, but just very quickly in response to the LinkedIn question, I too deleted my LinkedIn profile um, for similar reasons um, and actually use something called Create Britain now, um, which is about trying to bring together creative practitioners. Um, so perhaps something that CC Skills can share on their website potentially. Um, so our last question that we've got time for, I think, maybe one or two more. Oh, no, yeah, one or two more. But um, now that you've achieved a professional role in the industry, um, longer term, what are your career aims? What would you like to do next? Who wants to take that one first? I'll go. I'll go for that one. So I think what I would like to do, I mean, I've been doing this job for five years and I'd say like Fuzz said about hers, it really is in my head if I was to tell my 14 year old self this is my job it really is the dream job um so I think longer term I'd love to take everything I've known working for a big corporation and set up myself um and to do live events promotions and just do something different and maybe that's it a company that's purely woman driven based on everything we've said I don't know but I think longer term within the next 10 years that would definitely be be next for me that's brilliant thank you anybody else can I like, I kind of want to answer that with a question to Fuzz, just because um, I was really interested, Fuzz, that you said that you, because I'm like very much at the start, like I'm only two and a half years in and um, I love it. I love radio so much. The bit that, of it that I love at the moment, especially is like the sort of community element of it. I love doing things like this. I love outreach. And I feel a little bit like once you're in the industry, 
I feel a bit of a pressure to have like a progression that goes like that and like pursue you know like now I'm on local like the next step would be national but I don't really know and I and I feel a bit uncomfortable about going and starting at the bottom again somewhere else and I don't really know why I just wanted to ask you about like going and being a receptionist at a, a record label and how you made that decision after being a presenter at amazing radio and you did student radio and you must have thought at that time like I can't quit a job like this when this is what I worked so hard for like how did you how did you do that and navigate that <laughs> yeah I don't know Kitty it just happened. no it didn't just happen um, it's it's really difficult to explain but it's a combination of trusting your gut instincts and the reason I came to London was to apply for those internships at XFM that was my dream one mm. um, got it couldn't afford to do it and I was just I want to work in music I just that was all I knew I want to work in music so signed up there used to be a website called music jobs which I I'm not sure if it still exists it got a bit rubbish so don't pay for it if it's still there it's not great um and applied for every single entry level job that came up and PS came up and it was a front of house receptionist job and the, I know full well the reason I got that job is because in my interview, I talked about how they distributed my most favourite independent labels that Beggars, XL, Domino, Transgressive, like it's just, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do. And it's just, it's really difficult with the expectations like especially as a talent kitty like I can't even begin to like the amount of female DJs and presenters that feel that same pressure as you to just kind of always be succeeding always be growing always be getting better I find it's from the conversations I'm having it's really damaging to people's mental health mm -hmm. and I think it's and it's again like other people's expectations so it just it's just one that it's not a thing <laughs> um and don't be afraid to start again I mean I got this job producing Jack Saunders at 30 and like literally had to start again I had not been in a radio studio in 12 years I had not done a playlist meeting in 12 years like I just knew that I would be really really good at the job so just know your own worth and back yourself and honestly the people around you that support you and want to see you win will remain a constant source of champion for you and the people that don't that begrudge you like they just cut them off they're not important their opinions don't matter like I think start, starting again at 30 I think if you went to anybody else they'd be like why what are you doing you're earning so much money you're in the like you're universal and you're doing so well and it's like but my my 14 year old dream was to work at radio one and i have an opportunity to work at radio one i'm going to do it so it's just it is just knowing and backing yourself that's such good advice thank you fuzz thank you very much now um we are really drawing very close to close um so there are a couple of questions in the box which we may have to type an answer to i'm afraid um and i am sorry to cut us off what kind of whilst we're in our, our prime but um the, the fiona who mentioned obviously about her changing career and our, our linkedin profiles has mentioned about setting something up if we would support her um, so, you know, please do. Um, you have our full support. But I think um, I would just like to thank the panel for their time today, but also for the participants for their questions and, and, and supporting us really. I think, and obviously, of course, to CC Skills, um, both Bonnie and Rob, um, for putting on an event like today. I think it's massively important. And um, just as a, as a closing remark, I think it's going to take time to change. And I don't think that, that that's a cliche. I just think that whilst I'm sure as women we are a little fed up of the battle 
I don't think we can afford to give in. Um, I don't think there can be positive change unless we continue to make our mark and continue um, to work alongside um, the, the men in this industry and, and stake our claim on it. Um, and I think whilst it is difficult and it is frustrating, I think the key word that will come out of today is resilience. And I think my advice to the people that are listening in today would be, you can. Um, we did, you can. Um, and I think unless we continue to push together, we won't make that positive change. Um, so again, I am sorry that we're out of time, um, but I thank everyone very much for their participation and good luck everyone, you can do this. All right, and we hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much.